We're excited to have you be a part of this important public process. Tonight, you will have the opportunity to address City Council on both non-agenda and agenda items. The agendas and the speaker request cards are located on the tables outside of Council Chambers. You must fill out a speaker card in order to address the City Council. Please hand in your completed card to the City Clerk before the start of the meeting. If the meeting has already begun, please hand it to any City staff. You may also check the I do not wish to speak option on the card. This allows you to still voice your opinion on an item on the record without having to speak. Public comment on a non-agenda item will take place during the citizen comment portion of the evening. These are items that don't appear on tonight's formal agenda. The city clerk will call your name when it's time for you to speak. At that time, please approach the podium and state your name for the record. We ask that you speak clearly into the microphone. You'll have a maximum of three minutes and there is a timer visible from the podium. When the light changes from green to yellow, your time is coming to an end. When the light turns red, your time is up. Note that you may also choose not to speak if other speakers before you have said what you wanted to say. Shouting, cheering, and loud noises will not be tolerated, and violators may be removed for disrupting the meeting. Goodyear City Council meetings stream live on Facebook and YouTube, and online at GoodyearAZ.gov. Thank you for your participation in tonight's meeting. I'd like to call the meeting, regular meeting to order on February 22nd, 2021. Please join Council Member Pazillo in the Pledge of Allegiance and Invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Almighty Father, I ask that you provide wisdom for those of us on this dais so we may make wise and good decisions for our community and that you keep us safe from harm, all men and women in uniform serving here and abroad, along with all our frontline workers serving to battle against COVID-19. I would also ask that you help in providing an environment within the country that leads to a more conducive environment so that our government leaders can finally work together for the betterment of this country. Amen. 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 Thank you, Councilman Pazillo. We are all present. I'll now ask the city clerk to give information on how to participate in tonight's meeting. While the Goodyear City Council meetings are open to the public, the occupancy has been reduced to implement social distancing. Seating is generally available on a first-come basis, but meeting attendees will be cycled in and out if necessary to allow for speakers to speak on certain agenda items. If you wish to speak during a regular meeting, please complete a speaker's card so that we may ensure you are in the room for that item. Face masks are required and must be worn when moving throughout the building. Our residents still have several ways to address the council. They may submit their questions and comments to public comments at GoodyearAZ.gov, and during meetings, residents can view the meeting using Facebook, YouTube, or on the city clerk's office meeting video webpage. After the meetings are completed, they can also be viewed on YouTube. Public may always contact the mayor and council at any time by sending an email to gycouncil at goodyearaz.gov. Thank you very much. We have one communication item tonight. It's an update on the 2021 spring training season. Ballpark General Manager Bruce Kessner is presenting. Bruce. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for this opportunity tonight to come up and talk about 2021 spring training. And uh, at the, when we developed this presentation, a lot of information has changed, so I'm going to rely on the use of Elmo here tonight to uh, take us through this presentation. But uh, getting to uh, hosting fans in spring training has taken a lot of effort and it was really was spearheaded by the Cactus League, who took a proactive approach uh, in developing the spring training occupancy plan 
which was done in close coordination with the host facilities, host cities, Major League Baseball, and the Department of uh, Health Services. Uh, the, this plan was submitted to the County uh, Health Director, Marcy Flanagan, who did confirm that the occupant, occupancy plan takes all the appropriate precautions and mitigation strategies necessary to keep staff, fans, and players safe. Dr. Kara Chris of the Arizona Department of Health Services also concurred, which is great news for us. And uh, the ballpark staff has been really busy preparing to implement a lot of these mitigation measures. Uh, as I said, uh, information has been coming very quickly at us. And uh, it was actually a little over a week ago that we actually received a, a revised spring training schedule. I can get Elmo here. So typically we receive our schedule usually in July, August of the year before. And uh, this year, again, just about a little under two weeks or a little over two weeks from opening day. Uh, so with that, with the revisions, uh, opening day did shift from Saturday the 27th. Now we will open up on Sunday, February 28th. The season went from 30 home games now to 28. All of the Indians games are scheduled day games, and 11 of the 14 uh, Reds games are scheduled night games. So have a lot of night games this year at, uh, in Goodyear. Uh, so we'll kick things off on uh, February 28th on Sunday. Uh, that would be the annual charity game. Uh, the Indians this year have chosen the HOPE team of CTCA as the beneficiary of the charity game, and the Reds have also selected New Life Center. Uh, so with the new schedule, uh, tickets have gone on sale. Uh, we started uh, ticket sales last week on Friday. Ticket sales have been going very, very well. We do have the limited capacity of just uh, approximately 2,200 for the season. And uh, just prior to coming here to council tonight, uh, 13 games are now completely sold out. There's a 14th and 15th that are pretty close. We will be opening the box office on uh, Thursday, February 25th, but we are encouraging fans to buy early and not wait for the box office to open. And of course, you know, as everyone always says, things are going to look a little different this year. And it's going to be not quite the same experience that the uh, fans are used to in Goodyear, but uh, we do want everybody to be as safe as possible and enjoy games in Goodyear as much as they possibly can. So we've developed a what to know for 2021. This document actually does live on our website and it is updated. As I said, information uh, does change pretty rapidly. Uh, so we do encourage fans, we're meshing this out as much as we possibly can prior to uh, games. Some of the big things, uh, of course, face coverings must be worn at all times unless you're actively eating or drinking in your seats. Um, make sure that uh, our fans are practicing social distancing. Uh, we've done a lot inside the ballpark to reduce the contact points and introduce a lot of our uh, contactless systems. And that includes migrating more to a mobile ticketing platform. Uh, you can purchase your tickets and actually your ticket is right there on your mobile device now. Uh, we're also introducing a web application uh, called Appetize for concessions. So fans can order through their mobile device while sitting in their seat and you just head up to the concession stand and pick up your food so you don't have to wait in line. Uh, and again, a lot of those uh, areas, especially at the box office and also at the concession stands, we do have contactless payment systems being installed there as well. Of course, cleaning and disinfecting is top priority uh, for us. Uh, we, uh, back in June, when we hosted graduations, we received the Healthy Verify certification for our cleaning protocols, which we now just are continuing to use for, uh, for spring training. That includes uh, spraying down all of our seats prior to the game. Uh, we have a staff that's dedicated to uh, continually wiping down the high touch point surfaces all throughout the game and to attend to restrooms as well. We've also installed hand sanitizer stations all throughout the ballpark uh, to try to keep our uh, fans as safe as possible. But also we wanted to make sure that we did the same for our staff. So we're equipping them with the proper PPE and making sure that all of them can be socially distanced or are protected with uh, a plexiglass shield around them. And once again, all of this can be found on our website. And there's also a little bit on uh, what the fan expectations are. And once, you know, if you're feeling sick or have any of these symptoms, we ask that they do uh, stay home and not attend the game. 
And with that, uh, again, all of our information, buy tickets early, uh, check out the what do you need to know for 2021, all on our website, goodyearbp.com. Any questions? Yeah. Bruce, did you say we could buy tickets online now? Yes. Would you give us the website again? Goodyearbp.com. Thank you. Yep. Anything else? Very no, well done. And uh, you can see everybody's really working hard to make sure we go by the COVID rules. So we appreciate that. Keep everybody safe. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Now is the time for citizens who would like to address the City Council on any non-agenda item within the jurisdiction of Goodyear City Council. Are there any speaker power? No, Mayor. All right. Are there any, is there anybody in the audience that'd like to speak? All right, let's get on. Will the City Clerk please read consent agenda item three by title only? I understand that number two will be pulled and placed on a future agenda. Approve the fiscal year 2021 budget transfers. Oh, thank you. It looks kind of quick and quick and <laughs> sweet. Huh? Um, all right. Uh, does anybody wish on uh, the council wish to remove an item from the consent agenda? Mayor. Yes. I have a question on this item for the finance director. All right. Good. Could Doug Sandstrom come forward and answer this? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, Doug and I had a, con had a conversation this afternoon, but I um, felt it was important to ask, re-ask the question again in public, um, let the public hear the answer. Um, my question regarding the transfers was this appears to be items that should have been addressed in the budget changes that we made mid-year in January or a month or so ago, um, that these are new items. They're not replacement. They're not anything that came up. Uh, so I question why we were doing them now a month later as opposed to having done them earlier um, because we don't usually do new new things mid-year. And that was that was my question, and Doug has prepared a, a good answer, I think. <laughs> sure. The, these are two items that were requested as part of the fiscal year 2022 budget process that we're currently going through. Through that process, there were items that we felt um, – one of them is a for um, arson investigators where people are on the job, don't have the equipment. We wanted to get that in their hands right away. The other is for a heart monitor for a fire pumper that is also underway. Um, it would have been included as part of the mid-year budget process, but it had been submitted through 2022. We had 2021, which was a different process going on at the same time. So timing-wise, they just crossed, crossed paths with each other. I think that's good information for yeah, the that's public why as well as us so that they know there is a, a pathway Correct. Uh, for that type of uh, in, incident that happens. Mm -hmm. And that we're paying attention. Correct. Yes. <laughs> well, you were. Good on you. Okay. Thanks, Doug. I appreciate it. All right. Um, can I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda item number three? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second? Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Hampton, a second from Councilman... Laura Tano, roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Stepp? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Laura Tano? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right, there are three public hearings on the agenda. The first public hearing item is a planned development amendment to the restated and amended final plan area development for Ballpark Village and Ballpark Village South. I'm opening the public hearing, and I will continue this item on March 1st, 2021 regular meeting, and it will stay open. So number five is the next public hearing, rezoning approximately 139 acres loaded at the southeast corner of Citrus and Van Buren. Open the public hearing, and planner Christian Williams presenting. Christian? <coughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Before I go into my presentation tonight, I wanted to provide some background concerning the next two zoning items before Council this evening. 
As you will recall, in November 2017, there was a zoning ordinance text amendment which made changes to the residential zoning categories and standards within the city. As part of that discussion, direction was given to staff that council was amenable to allowing developments with smaller lots if the quality of the amenities, connectivity, and streetscapes were enhanced. Council specifically directed staff to create diverse places within communities that are accessible to the surrounding residents, create inclusive communities that promote a sense of community, and provide walkability and bikeability with easy and quick access to nearby amenities, and to create a sense of place and ensure that smaller lot developments are a high quality. In order to provide for a roadmap, Council adopted the minimum design enhancements needed for each category and lot size. This was done to provide clear guidance to staff and the development community as we create highly amenitized, connected, and streetscaped communities. Throughout the course of the next two presentations, you will see how staff and the development community have worked together to take Council's roadmap and create tangible outcomes that provide the developer with flexibility and future residents with increased design elements and livable places. In addition, during the work session and charrette exercises, Council has provided guidance on a vision for the up and coming area of Goodyear uh, uh, that, we gener that is generally located between Interstate 10 on the north, the Gila River on the south, Perryville Road on the west, and Cotton Lane slash Canyon Trails on the east. This area has been commonly referred to as West Goodyear. This area of the city is comprised of more than a dozen landowners and developers, unlike the master plan areas in the city, such as Palm Valley, Canyon Trails, and Estrella. Over the course of the next two presentations, staff believes a unified vision, look, and feel for the area will begin to emerge, which will make West Goodyear feel like a quality, cohesive master plan community with an agrarian theme and less like a dozen disconnected subdivisions. With that being said, I will kick off tonight with the first of the West Goodyear communities, Silva Trails. So I'm here before you this evening with a request from Taylor Earl to conduct a rezoning on a property within the city. The property is approximately 139 acres and it is located on the southeast corner of Citrus Road and Van Buren Street. It is in the central part of our city and the area, again, west of Cotton Lane that is commonly referred to as West Goodyear. The property is currently zoned PAD under the Rose Gardens Final Planned Area Development. And for context on the map, that is right here in this red area. Zooming in a little closer, you can see that this project is west of Oasis at Canyon Trails, also north of Oasis at Canyon Trails, as well as a farm field owned by the city and an existing charter school. It is east across Citrus Road from large county properties south of a vacant C2 general commercial property, as well as south of the Cotton Lane RV Park. For a brief history on the property, in 2008, the property was first zoned for a project called Rose Gardens. It included the entire quarter square mile, and the development plans called for a mix of single family dwelling units configured on Z lots, 60 foot wide lots, 65 foot wide lots, and 70 foot wide lots, and a commercial at the southeast corner of Citrus Road and Van Buren, a public facility district at the northwest corner of Citrus and Harrison. And I'll point out that the uh, southeast portion of the property has since been um, developed as Odyssey Preparatory Academy, and that did not require rezoning, as schools do not require rezonings. In contrast, on the right, you will see before us today is Silva Trails. It calls for a gated community zoned R14, with R14 reduced standards within modifications to account for lot diversity as well as a central amenity. A couple highlights from the amenities area. For amenities, the central community park will include a pool, shaded children's water feature, and bathroom facility. They will also provide an outdoor kitchen with two built-in gas barbecue grills, a built-in countertop sink, all underneath a shade trellis structure. The central amenity will also include a clubhouse with both indoor and outdoor large areas, meeting rooms, bathrooms, and gathering spaces, a cornhole plaza with four cornhole courts and seating, and a shaded playground lighted basketball court, shaded picnic tables with charcoal barbecue grills, and a large turf area with space for fields for organic play will be wrapped around that central community area. On the left, you will see the proposed layout of that central amenity and a visual of a similar community center 
um, is on the right, and that is in a development called Archer Meadows in Santan Valley. Also today, the proposal before you, Silva Trails, will include largely R14 reduced lots. Lot diversity is provided in this development through the use of minimum percentages of lots and size of lots. Typical R14 reduced lots are 40 foot wide by 100 foot deep and 4,000 square feet in size. The development proposes a 45 foot wide lot with a 120 foot depth, a 50 foot wide lot with a 120 foot depth, and a 55 foot wide lot with a 90 foot depth. The 50 by 90 lot is still 950 square feet larger than the typical 40 by 100 foot R14 reduced lot. This development is also considered infill as it will largely complete the square mile of the Canyon Trails uh, development area, which includes schools and parks as well. The development will create the first portion of the envisioned West Goodyear streetscape element. It will include a decomposed granite bridal trail on the east side of Citrus Road that is eight feet, eight feet wide, immediately west of a sidewalk that is nine feet um, the sidewalk is also nine foot wide, and there'll be a nine foot wide landscape track between the horse trail, bridle trail, and the sidewalk. There will also be uh, street trees planted 25 foot on center along that bridle path corridor. There will also be mid block trails, view fencing along portions of Citrus, Ave Citrus Road, and pedestrian access points from the community onto the bridle path. And an eight foot wide sidewalk and trails will lead from that central amenity area out to the perimeters of the community. Can see a picture of a cross section of that right here. To highlight some of the streetscape elements, detached sidewalks will be used when a five foot planting buffer can be provided for. The HOA will maintain the plants in this planting strip to ensure that they are maintained effectively and that they are replaced when damaged. And homes on lots that are 40 foot wide will have paver driveways. The entrances into the community, which you can see in the upper left, will feature pavers or colored concrete in combination with some very nice entry enhancements. Being that this is the first community on the north side of what the city is branding as West Goodyear, the development will feature a West Goodyear gateway monument, effectively the beginnings of us trying to make this area of Goodyear feel master planned. We have asked all developers in this area of Goodyear to create West Goodyear entry monuments and incorporate common theming elements of which this developer has done in order to meet the streetscape element points. They will add a Silva Trails at West Goodyear sign, which you can see right here, at the corner of Citrus and Van Buren Street. They will include picket and rail fencing along the bridle path and at the monuments. And pedestrian gates and trail connection gates will feature trellis structures, as you can see up in the upper right-hand corner. And the entrances and sidewalks will be lined with shade trees. This development, development will begin to set the standards for the future West Goodyear area of our city, a master plan feel for this area as opposed to many small disconnected neighborhoods. This area will feel like a character area of the city, similar to Canyon Trails, Estrella, or Palm Valley, which all have their own unique master plan character and feel. And with that, staff has evaluated the impacts of this proposed zoning to the greater community. With no major concerns being found, staff recommends council approve to rezone the property from Rose Garden's final planned area development to R14 with R14 reduced standards within the Silva Trails PAD overlay, provided via the stipulations and subject to the stipulations found in the staff report. The applicant is here. If you need them to answer any questions, they would be happy to come up. If not, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you very much. Great presentation. So. Uh, are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? I'm going to close the public hearing. Will the city clerk please read resolution number 2021-2131 by title only. Adopt resolution number 2021-2131 declaring a public record those certain documents filed with the city clerk entitled official supplementary zoning map number 20-07 city of goodyear az rezone case and legal description silva trails thank you can i have a motion a second to approve resolution number 2021-2131 do i hear that motion so moved second i heard a motion from vice mayor stiff and a second from councilman Fazillo. open for council discussion councilman kano the city property on the southwest corner what is that What's the plan for that? 
It's zoned public facilities district, and I believe one of the plans okay. is for a fire station. Okay, very good. All right, I, it looks to me like a great plan, a great rework. Uh, love, it is highly amenitized. I think it's going to be a very special uh, location. Thank you. Vice Mayor? Well, I'm disturbed by the comment, one of the plans. Isn't that our next fire station at Harrison and Citrus? <laughs> it is, yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, Taylor, I, I just wanted to please pass along to your to your clients. Uh, this is a really good project. It's nice to finally get cane, you know, that portion of Canyon Trails filled in and and uh, something, again, completely unique uh, to your point, Christian, about doing something very unique in West Goodyear. And um, I think this is the start of many, many unique projects for that area. So thank you. Great. Councilman Hampton. Yeah, also, I think it's a, gonna be a great project too. I live right near there. My parents live in that Canyon Trails right there as well. So I, I think it'll add a lot to that area. I think it looks good there as well. So I think it'll be a good complement to the rest of that area. It'll definitely fill in I think that whole real quadrant up there. So, so yeah, so I think it looks good. I like the amenities. I think that'll go really well. Uh, there's not many developments that have a, a pool in them. So I think that's a big amenity for, for a lot of these neighborhoods. And um, yeah, so look forward, look forward to it as well. So thank you. Well designed, it's very inviting. Uh, just this treescape along the street. And we've made many times remarks about Murado that they have streets like that. So I know you're pleased with that, and I love the, the elements that the house is having and the combination of home sites. So I think it's going to be, it'll probably sell quickly. So if you're interested in it, better be looking at it. And thank you again. You do a great, great presentation. So I have a motion. We're ready for roll call. Vice Mayor Stitt? Aye. Councilmember Lortano? Aye. Councilmember Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Councilmember Kano? Aye. Councilmember Pizzello? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Thank you. Will the city clerk please read ordinance number 2021-1495 by title only? Adopt ordinance number 2021-1495 conditionally rezoning approximately 139 acres generally located at the southeast corner of Citrus Road and Van Buren Street, amending the zoning map of the city of Goodyear, providing for non-abridgement, correction, severability, and effective date and penalties. Thank you. Can I have a motion a second to approve ordinance number 2021-1495? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Kano and a second by Councilman Campbell. Open for council discussion. I think we already did it, didn't we? It's all positive, though. Roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Stipp? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Kano? Aye. Council Member Pizzello? Aye. Council Member Loretano? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. Great. Well, thank you. We we'll look forward to that. All right. The next item is a public hearing to consider rezoning from a PAD, planned area development, to an R R1-4 single family detached and an R1C court home for Citrus Park. Open the public hearing. Principal planner Steve Qureshi will present the item and item seven together in one presentation. Steve? Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, thank you, Mayor. As you mentioned, I will be presenting for both the rezoning and pre-plat with this one presentation tonight. And that is for Citrus Park. And where we are located, we're about a little over two miles south of I-10 along Citrus Road and Lower Buckeye here, about a mile and a half or so north of MC-85. And zooming in, We've got a couple other, several other West Goodyear properties around, as you can see, from Citrus Ridge, El Cedro, and Las Brisas wrapping around the south and to the west. Property is 160 acres. It is designated as neighborhoods in a general plan, and that's intended for residential, public community facilities, and neighborhood type commercial uses. Uh, also, as introduced by Christian, it is in the West Goodyear area. Uh, there are regional water and wastewater agreements approved for this area. Uh, for this property, all the water, regional water lines that are needed are in. Uh, for wastewater, there are a few that need to be put in, so either this developer or another developer will need to install those lines to provide wastewater service. Uh, it is currently zoned PAD, uh, Levinson Piece 160, that was approved back in 2007. And that was for 422 homes 
357 single family, the rest court homes. It also had a commercial corner. Uh, proposal tonight, though, is to replace the Levinson PAD with Citrus Park. And what they're going to do is proposing 114 of the 160 acres, rezoning that to R14, uh, the remaining 46 acres to court home. Uh, total, about 616 units. About two-thirds will be single family, uh, 45 feet wide and 55 feet wide. Uh, the rest, about 195, will be 40 feet wide. And along with the R14, the request is to reduce the side yards from our typical 5 and 10 to 5 and 5. And this is the development plan. And again, on the north, we're bordered by Lower Buckeye, and then Citrus Road. We will have one access point from Lower Buckeye, uh, one from Citrus, and another one through Las Brisas here through a collector. Uh, we'll have the three different pods. We'll have the court homes right here. We'll have the couple pods of 45 foot wide lots, and then the two pods of 55 foot wide lots. And this is a couple examples of the court home. Typical plan is six detached lots, each with their own private yard. Uh, they will share a common driveway that will then access the public street. And I should point out that the staff and the developer, we did work together to ensure that the two homes at the end facing a street, that you would have the fronts facing the street and versus block walls and side yards. So you have a nice enhanced streetscape with this design. And then again, as Christian mentioned, because it is a request for R14, smaller lots, and R1C, and reduced setbacks, there are certain design elements that the developer had to provide. And this table shows the number of, of each elements that were required by the code. And here, with these bullet lists, are the elements that the developer did provide with this rezoning. And just to go through some of their plan and some of their elements. Uh, one of the main things that Citrus Park is providing is 447 acres of open space over five parks. And that'll be anchored by an almost six acre park here in the central portion of the development. And this is a larger view of that six acre park. And again, it will have also have a pool amenity with bath house a parking area for residents. It'll uh, be surrounded by formal landscape groves, play areas. Uh, this will be an east-west regional trail running through the property. And then it'll connect to another southern portion of this property where you'll have more active areas for residents to use. And again, this overall is about six acres of area. And these are some of the design themes, again, promoting that agrarian type of theme for these areas in West Goodyear. And uh, one of the unique aspects of Citrus Park I wanted to point out is uh, their use of citrus groves at their entrances and at key points along some of their main roads. So that'll be a unique feature for this development as they move forward. And for this rezoning, uh, there are 10 factors that staff looks at for the rezoning, consistency with the general plan, compatibility with the surrounding area. So we review each of these with all of our rezoning requests. And in doing so, we did find that the request did meet our 10 criteria, uh, was consistent with the general plan. The development patterns that's proposed here is con will be consistent with the surrounding area. There's been no public opposition raised for this project. Uh, we did not identify any adverse fiscal impacts. For public participation, for the citizen review, as well as these public hearings before the Planning Commission and City Council, staff did conduct all the required public notice that was required. Uh, no opposition has resulted from any of that notice. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission did hear this item at their meeting of February 10th. They did vote to recommend approval to the council. There also was no opposition voiced at the commission hearing. Uh, with that, can including my presentation, our staff and the commission, we do recommend approval of both the rezoning and the preliminary plat. We do find a rezoning applies with all the evaluation criteria as set forth in the zoning code. Uh, we do find the plat is consistent with our subdivision regulations. Uh, we would recommend the approval for the rezoning that is subject to the 41 stipulations in the draft ordinance 
and that the pre-plat is subject to the 25 stipulations noted in the pre-plat staff report. Uh, with this, Mayor, that concludes my presentation. Uh, staff's available for, for questions. The applicant is also here if you have any questions. Yes, I notice it's Carolyn Ogerholzer. Yes. Would she like to speak? Only if you have questions. Well, I will just wait and see, so. Um, uh, do we have any speaker cards? No, Mayor. All right. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? I'm gonna close the public hearing. And will the city clerk please resolution number 2021-2129 by title only? Adopt resolution number 2021-2129 declaring as public records those certain documents filed with the city clerk entitled official supplementary zoning map number 20-05 legal description for Citrus Park legal description for Citrus Park R1-4 zoning district legal description for Citrus Park R1-C zoning district Citrus Park Parks and Open Space Plan, Citrus Park Circulation Plan, Citrus Park Wall Plan, Citrus Park Entry Features and Wall Elevations, Citrus Park North Entry Monument Plan, Citrus Park Pedestrian Lighting Plan, and Preliminary Plat for Citrus Park. Thank you. Can I have a motion a second to approve resolution number 2021-2129? Do I hear that motion? So move. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Campbell and a second from Vice Mayor. Open for council discussion. Councilman Campbell. I have a question please for the clerk I don't have the this presentation on my computer so would you we don't either I would you send it to me I really would like a good close look at what they're proposing yes and I, and none of us have it okay thank you Councilman Hampton yeah I had a question I think it's a great project um, but I had a hard time maybe because I could don't have the presentation so is there a light at the exit, there's one entrance and exit, right? Is there a light at that entrance and exit? I'm trying to think how close it is to Citrus, like a mile or a half a mile away from Citrus, and about maybe half a mile or so from what is that, Perryville? Mayor, council members, this intersection, right? Yeah, here. I'm just just curious if what the future will hold for what's across the street and what's there, and if it will need if there's any agreements with the with a, a light potentially I'm not sure that the man I'm just curious how where how does relationship to everything else there I know the resistance is growing very quickly but this is just one but this is one part of yeah. not you can't get the less resistance through here but I'm just curious if there's a agreement with the light if there will ever be a light mayor council members I apologize I do not recall if the traffic study what it mentioned or what it stated on this intersection here uh, <laughs> potentially the applicant might have that information does the applicant have that information yeah, yeah we're looking for it they're talking maybe she'll come forward here she comes <clears throat> thank you for coming forward Mayor and Council Members, it's nice to be back before you. Carolyn Oberholzer with the law firm of Bergen Frake, Smalley and Oberholzer, 4343 East Camelback in Phoenix, here this evening on behalf of Lancy Homes, who um, is in escrow to purchase this property. And in the staff uh, stipulations for the preliminary plat, it does speak to future contributions to traffic signals. Some are specific. Some are not specific and dependent on future traffic studies and signal warrants. So that was one that is not predetermined as necessary, but that would be studied um, when we come forward with the final design and final plat. Okay. Great. Right. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I mean, much, I think Dave. it's a good a good project. I like it. I was just curious sure. overall how it's gonna fit into the rest of the area there. So I thank do you. I have one really question. Councilman Lane. Lane. All right, Councilman Lane, no? There is a corridor in about the middle that's the east-west that you identified as trail and um, but it says WAPA easement. Is it an electrical uh, line corridor? And are the lines already up? Mayor Councilman, yes. Okay. So buyers will know in advance that there are electrical, uh, there's electrical equipment running through there. Okay. Um, I like the plan. I like the court homes. Um, I think it's uh, the amenities and things. I just want to know about uh, those lines. Thank you. Campbell. My question is about the roundabout. Um, it, it's so that they can go to the left to those homes. 
I mean, I'm sorry, if you're coming in at the top, they want a roundabout so that they can access those homes rather than just turn left. Mayor, council members, the roundabout was a unique design enhancement proposed for this development that the developer wanted to add into their development. Is it an art project? I mean, is that, is it tendency to go towards that? A showpiece or, yes, she's nodding yes, see? Right, Mayor Council, versus a standard four-way stop with stop signs, this is a nice enhancement and amenity for the okay. whole neighborhood. I'm sorry I spoke for you, but if you have anything additional, go ahead. Mayor, you spoke for me well, thank you. All right. Well, any other? Well, I'll say when I see 2007, and we're at this date, and it's finally happening where we're developing that area, I think it's uh, most becoming. It's a nice look to it, and the green area is very nice. It's well-placed. Sort of everybody can take a short walk and be near a green space, which is really good. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any more council discussion? All right, let's do a roll call, please. Vice Mayor Stipp? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Council Member Cano? Aye. Council Member Pizzillo? Aye. Council Member Loritano? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right. Will the city clerk re please read ordinance number 2021-1493 by title only? Adopt ordinance number 2021-1493 conditionally rezoning approximately 160 acres of land at the southwest corner of Citrus Road and Lower Buckeye Road, amending the zoning map and providing for non-abridgement, correction, severability, penalties, and an effective date. Thank you. Can I have a motion, a second, to approve ordinance 2021-1493? Do I hear that motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Vice Mayor Stiff and a second from Councilman Bazil. Open for council discussion. I think we've really talked about it enough. So roll call vote, please. Vice Mayor Stiff? Aye. Council Member Cano? Aye. Council Member Pizzello? Aye. Council Member Loritano? Aye. Council Member Campbell? Aye. Council Member Hampton? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. The motion carries. All right, we're down to the business, and I'd like to remind council to wait for motion seconds before discussion. And number seven, the only item on business is consider approving the preliminary plat for Citrus. Planner Steve Caretta has uh, already presented this item. Are there any speaker cards? Anybody like to speak? Then I, can I have a motion a second to approve the request for the preliminary plat for Citrus Park? Attached here to subdividing approximately 160 acres located at the southwest corner of Citrus Row and Lower Buckeye. Income, uh, it's called the property and subject to the stipulation to her motion. So moved. Second. Heard a motion by Councilman Hampton and a second by, by Councilman Kano. Open for council discussion. No discussion. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. All right. I believe we're at the end of the meeting, so city manager, would you like to take the floor? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just wanted to again mention that we have a special election on March 9th on our proposed charter changes. Ballots must be returned by March 9th, and City Hall will serve as a ballot replacement center during normal business hours beginning on Monday, March 1st, and including special hours on Saturday, March 6th. The city will be holding a virtual public meeting this Wednesday, February 24th at 10 a.m., on the proposed changes. I would encourage our residents to attend the meeting or watch the recording that will be made if you're unable to attend live. It will be available on the city's website at www.goodyearaz.gov forward slash elections. Thank you. That sounds good. I think the public will like that. There's a lot of interest. Uh, do you have, I know, report any reports or events you've been at, but Vice Mayor has something. No, I just have a question for manager and or the attorney about a month ago we did the performance evaluation and the contract for the for the judge I would have thought by now we would have seen the outcome of those the performance plan the uh, goals etc that we that we talked about are we close to that um, uh, thank you. So the um, judge and um, human resources did come to agreement on those proposed goals. 
Um, I've spoken with the judge. I, I believe she was going to send those around to council, but if that hasn't happened, I will I will check in and uh, ensure that those are are received. Okay, thank you. Council Campbell? I just wanted to thank everyone for the birthday cards that they sent up to my daughters. I received almost 200 cards. Oh, my goodness. And it's from every department in the city, and I just really thank everyone that took the time to buy a card and and say something nice to me. I appreciate it. It, it meant it meant an awful lot. Council Thank you. Priscilla. Except from Joe. Except from Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think I only made a phone call. It's just because so, I yeah. love him. That's all. Um, there was also, if I'm <clears throat> not mistaken, some type of a review that was going on. Might be related something along those lines. If we can get an update on that at some point, what the status of that is. With regard to the court. Yes. Thank you. Any other? No? Okay, the next meeting will be a regular meeting on March 1st, 2021. There being no further business to discuss, this meeting is adjourned.